Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to the special OAA Now football preview show. This is the gold edition. I am Sammy Taramina, blogger of Around the OAA, one of the hosts of Blast 3 Brain Cells. Um, it's a podcast um, on Oriented Television, also the host of Between Terminus on Oriented Television as well. Like to watch, like to welcome all of you hearing us on the local voice on SoundCloud and also those watching on Oriented Television and also those watching on YouTube. The 2022 football season is here. Um, now we kick off the, um, the um, preview show with the um, gold division this week, followed by the blue next week, and then the white in two weeks, and then the red next week, and the red in three weeks. So Let's start. Let's begin with the with the um, with the gold division. This is the first time the OA has used the gold division since 2003, when Blue Bay Hills lost or won the division. So let's look at the new gold division. Starting off with the Yellow Jackets of Auburn Hills Avondale. Here's a team that's really been pretty well um, last few years as a consistent program, but the last few years they've really experienced some. Um, some struggles. So here is Avondale coach Corey Bell at the post. The Yellow Jackets. All right, it's an honor to get to go first. We always love coming down to OA uh, Media Day. Thank you to Coach Vernon and Rochester for hosting. I uh, wanted to welcome in, and we got a couple new coaches coming into the OAA, so welcome to all the new coaches. Um, my opinion is the best conference in the state of, uh, in the state of Michigan. So a lot of talent here. Uh, we're excited to be part of the OAA Gold. Uh, excited to face some very talented teams and get to cross over with some of the uh, very, very good teams in the OAA Blue, so looking forward to a great year. Um, we had a great summer, as, as most of you did, I know. We had some good numbers, 7-7 seven and seven was great, had a couple great camps. Um, but as my old uh, head coach used to say, none of that crap matters. So we get to put the pads on here in a couple days, and uh, we're looking forward to it. So brought a couple seniors with me, I'll let them introduce themselves. Sean Robinson, no my name on Calvin K, wide receiver in the corner. Terry Daniel, uh, wide receiver in the corner. So I just wanted to wish everyone the best of luck. Good luck this season. Stay healthy. When looking at the Yellow Jackets this year, the quarterback situation is very interesting. Um, there is some questions there. Um, the, watch out for players like Terry Daniel at running back. I'm high on him along with them. Cooper Vofre, Justin Sykes at wide receiver. Um, Cameron Washington, another young one to watch for. Um, and Reef Henderson's another one to keep an eye on as well. So I caught up with Avondale coach Corey Bell to talk about his team um, coming up to the season. I got the coach of Avondale, Corey Bell here. Coach, um, how is your quarterback situation going? Oh, it's good, man. We have, uh, I wish we had a couple more, but we have uh, Tyler Herzog's gonna step in. He's gonna be a junior. Um, he started three games for us last year when our starter last year got hurt. So um, he's the younger brother of our starter from last season. So he's got a little bit of experience. Uh, he's gonna do a good job for us. Talk about last season, of course, you guys were in the, um, made the playoffs last year. How'd that postseason experience help you guys get into this season? Uh, I think it, uh, it put a little, uh, a little bad taste in their mouth. You know, we're happy to make the postseason, but we got whooped by Brother Ice. So, uh, you know, to end the season on a bad note for our guys coming back, um, you know, they've got something to work for. So they're, they're looking forward to it. What are your expectations here, Coach? Our expectations um, are to win every single game. Um, our, our motto this year is our game, our way. We're not worried about who we play. Uh, we'll play anyone, anywhere, anytime, and uh, we're focused on one week at a time. Um, but OEA oh yeah, Gold Championship, host a playoff game, those are two big goals for us. Thank you very much, Coach. Okay. Appreciate it. When looking at the Yellow Jackets, of course, the motto this year, um, everything with Avondale, when you look at the schedule this year with Avondale, it involves the city of Warren on a couple of occasions. Of course, when you look at the schedule this year, they do head to Warren Cousineau to take on the Patriots. Now, Warren Cousineau since 2017 is six and 38. Since 2017, one and 24 in the last three seasons. So. If Avondale should go in there and win that game, if not, something seriously wrong in that one. Um, September 2nd, they go to, they take a host Holly. It's their home opener, of course, from last season. Avondale did go into Holly. Um, they lost 23 to nothing last year. Now, Holly's got a new coach in Billy Keenis taking over that program. Um, Keenis does know the OA quite well, being at Troy Athens and at Berkeley. Um, so that's gonna be a very interesting matchup. Um, I know Avondale's been looking for revenge in that matchup, so it'll be very interesting. It'll be a good matchup over at, the, at, um, at, um, 
Auburn Hills this season. Um, September 9th, they, um, they go to the, to the Maple Forest to take on Seaholm. Of course, this is the first meeting since 2019 where um, Avondale lost 61 to 39, 63 31 to, um, to the Maples um, in that matchup. So that's going to be a really interesting matchup. Um, curious to see how Avondale matches up against the Vera Seaholm. Um, that is a very interesting matchup. And then league play starts for um, Avondale. Of course, they take on Berkeley um, at home last season. Of course, they lost 34-19 at Hurley. Um, so that's going to be a really interesting matchup there in that one. Then September 23rd, they go to the they go to the new stadium at Pontiac. Um, when you look at Avondale, they've won eight straight against the Phoenix. Um, it's going to be a very interesting matchup, but I, I just don't know. I mean, like. Um, We'll see how that one goes, but I know Abnell's had Pontiac's number. Um, week number, um, week six, this is Ferndale. Um, Abnell and Ferndale, they've had some rival, they've had some battles. I mean, like when you look at, um, I know for a time the road teams won the last um, couple meetings. Um, that changed last year when um, Abnell went into Ferndale, Abnell won 21 nothing last season. So that's a very interesting matchup there. Um, week seven, they take on North Farmington. Um, Again, this is a very interesting matchup. Of course, um, this is the first meeting since 2019. Um, of course, the um, where um, North Farmington beat Avondale 56 to 20. Um, so this is going to be a really interesting matchup there between those two teams. And then week eight, they take on Royal Oak. Of course, Royal Oak, Avondale's won eight straight against the Ravens. Um, and then week nine, they take on Warren Fitzgerald um, and Warren. It's the first meeting since 2011 where um, Avondale um, won 55-18 um, in that matchup. So interesting matchups, interesting schedule for Avondale this year when you look at the Yellow Jackets. Um, there's a lot of um, expectation for Avondale this year, a lot of, um, a lot of um, promise coming into this year for Coach Corey Bell's team. Um, if they can address that quarterback situation, it looks like it's going to be Tyler Herzog starting. A um, little concerned about their depth, a little concerned about um, – you know, if they can address some things, I think Avondale could be a very good football team coming into the season. Um, let's go now from Avondale. Let's go to Berkeley. Of course, Berkeley last season has probably been the most consistent of the group of the um, when they were in the blue last year. Um, they, they made the postseason last year, but lost a tough one in overtime to War to Waterford Mott. Um, so here is Berkeley coach um, Sean Shields at the podium talking about the Bears. Uh, thanks to Rochester for hosting again. Uh, always look forward to this event. Um, last year, uh, team went seven and three, had a good run for a while. Uh, came up short in the playoffs in overtime. We are returning, I believe it's 23 seniors this year. Um, only one of them on the defensive side of the ball. But uh, so some of these guys may have to learn how defense goes. But. Uh, Program-wise, this year we're going to have a full varsity and a freshman program. It's uh, looking like a little rough for the JV sophomore count, uh, but we should have around 30-something freshmen, and we're around 52 on the varsity with the sophomores coming up. Uh, we start the year off with Milan this year at home. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to put on a good show for everybody. Um, go ahead and pass the mic off to everybody, and here you go. I'm David Rollins. I'm an O-line, D-line. So, uh, Davis, running back, DB. Max Walsh, quarterback, linebacker. Isaac Dawkins, O-line, D-line. Cameron Knight, D-line, O-line. Noah Wesner, tight end, linebacker. Again, thank Rochester for having us out. Everybody start enjoying two a day, stay healthy, and good luck this season. When I talked to Coach Shields in the podcast, of course, and we talked about the quarterback competition, um, we talked about the Bears. I mean, like, last season, of course, they had that win against Avoni Clarenceville. Um, so when you look, so when I talked to Coach Shields um, this time around, you know, there's a lot of excitement, and, but also there is a lot of questions when surrounding the Bears. I got frequent podcaster, um, Berkeley coach Sean Shields here. Um, coach, how's the quarterback situation been going for you? Uh, pretty good. Um, right now, I would say Wallstead's probably leading uh, the hunt. Uh, but Monday's going to bring a whole new challenge, and we're going to see how it goes between him and Sonny. Um, 
start putting pads on. We'll have our blue and maroon scrimmage, our inner squad, and I think that'll kind of set the tone for who's going to wind up being the quarterback this year. Talk about your matchup with Milan week one. That's an interesting matchup. We talked frequently on the pod about it. Um, talk about your schedule this year, your non-conference. Uh, so non-conference, starting with Milan. Um, good program, very successful at the D4 level. Uh, we've got a lot of good athletes. I think we match up well for them, size, and, and our line, which I'll take against anybody that we play. Uh, a lot of stuff they do, they you know want to spread you out for everything, but they, again, are, it's high school football, they want to run. So we have to be prepared to shut that run game down and uh, then just turn around on them and be able to you know play physical, dominant football, something that we like to do. So, um, What is the expectation this year, Coach? Uh, every year, Sam, uh, to win our league. This year we have the gold, um, something that – uh, we've been pushing for for a while, and to win the first league title in Berkeley's history would be huge for the program, for the seniors that we have over there. Um, that's been our goal every year. We've fallen short a couple of times, but this year, you well, know, we roll back into it, and I think if we don't win a, a league title this year, it'll be a disappointment in the program. Thank you really much, Coach Shields. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. Players to watch for on Berkeley, of course, Sabah Daniels, of course, he is their top running back. Last season, he had 670 yards and six touchdowns. Um, Nolan Wesner, um, the top receiver at um, tight end. Of course, last season, he had six receptions for 143 yards. Um, Sabah Daniels, of course, had eight receptions for 134 yards and a touchdown. David Rollins, we mentioned a lot about him. I mean, like, he is a very good athlete, very good track athlete, very good player. Um, and watch out for punter Hunter Roberson. I mean, he's going to be – he's one of the best um, – kickers in the state. He was an All-State Honorable mention a year ago. So there is a lot to look forward to for Berkeley. I am very concerned about the quarterback, very concerned about the wide receivers and DB situation for um, Coach Shields this season. But when you look at the schedule, we did talk in the interview. Um, opening up with Milan, of course, Milan, they made the postseason seven straight times. Um, they are 82 and 19 since 2012. That is remarkable, of course, especially with what um, Milan's done. This is going to be a much tougher challenge for Berkeley than playing Livonia Clarence for last season, despite the fact they were undefeated last year. Milan is a perennial power. It's going to be a very daunting task for Coach Shields and the Bears. Um, even though that game's at Hurley, but that's going to be a very daunting task. Um, week two, they take on Troy Athens. Um, it's at Troy Athens. Of course, um, Berkeley's won two straight against the Red Hawks. Um, so that's going to be a very interesting matchup, especially with the changes that Troy Athens has made this offseason. Um, week three, they take on Pontiac. Um, they won seven straight, of course, including last season. Um, be winning at the new stadium a year ago against Pontiac. Um, week four, they take on Avondale. Um, on the road, of course, this is going to be a big one here, of course, last season. Um, Last season, Avondale won, uh, Berkeley won 34-19 a year ago. Um, so that's going to be a really interesting matchup there. Um, week number five, um, of course, this is an interesting one because Berkeley and Ferndale are neighborhood rivals, but the last two years, these two teams have not played one another. Of course, last season, Ferndale couldn't play because of the COVID outbreak that they had within their program. Um, and these two teams are going to get it on for the first time since 2019. This is going to be a really interesting matchup between um, between these two teams. I'm curious to see how Ferndale's experience matches up with Berkeley um, and vice versa. Of course, the rivalry, you know, it is a rivalry between these two teams um, considering where they're located at. And then there's the battle of um, Woodward, of course, the, um, the trophy that um, divides the um, divides um, Royal Oak and Berkeley. Of course, it's, it is homecoming for Berkeley. It's at Hurley Field. Of course, the Lexington Catalpa um, street sign is the trophy that they fight for. Um, last season, of course, um, Berkeley went into Royal Oak, took two interceptions back for touchdowns, um, and it was a 49-9 blowout. I did not, I mean, that was a stunner, to say the least, when you know, so but when you look at both teams, Royal Oak's got a lot of experience coming back. So that's going to be a really interesting matchup between the Ravens and the Bears. I know that rivalry very well. I mean, it is a really, really, really it can get really nasty, especially with the student section um, of both those teams. Um, week seven, um, they take on Seaholm, of course. This is the first meeting since 2018. Um, Berkeley um, lost 42-13 to the Maples. Um, It'll be an interesting matchup to see how um, Seaholm handles the veer. Um, I'm curious to see how that matchup is going to look. And then 
Week number eight, they traveled to Beverly Hills to take on Groves, and this is an interesting match. I'm curious to see how they match up. It's the first meeting since um, 2017 where they lost 24 0 to Groves, so it's going to be an interesting matchup there. And then they close out the year on week nine, heading into St. Clair Shores to take on Lakeview, of course. Um, Lake is the first meeting between the um, Huskies and the Bears. Um, of course, Lakeview runs the wing T. Berkeley's more power type team. So it's going to be interesting to see what team shows their will up front. This is going to be a battle up front, especially when you look at the offenses that both these two teams have when you look at this matchup. So that's when you look at the Bears this year. I mean, like, there's a lot of expectation coming into the year. A lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of opportunities to look at when you look at Berkeley this year. There is a lot of expectation this year. So that's my take on Berkeley. I think Berkeley could be in line for another very good year. I know they got to address the quarterback. They got to address the wide receiver and the defensive secondary positions. They address that. I think they're going to be good. I will also have a podcast, the podcast with the interview I had with Coach Shields. It'll also be on the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. He was on the podcast this season as well. So I will have that up on the blog as well. So, okay, now let's go from Berkeley and let's go now to Ferndale. Of course, when you look at the Eagles, what happened to this team last year? I mean, what happened to them? I mean, like, they really struggled. Uh, I know they were young a year ago. So here's Ferndale coach Eric Roy at the podium um, talking about the Eagles. Good afternoon, coaches and players. Um, I want to thank first thank the Rochester AD department for inviting us here and hosting this event. Um, I'm going to let the players introduce themselves, and then I'll talk about the season. My name is Darnell Bates, quarterback. And then Ward McAllister, our receiver. Darrell Kerner, O line, D line. And I am uh, O line, D line. Lamar Croxy, O line, D line. All right, um, going into this year, we actually very excited. Last year was a, a, a wake up call for us. We went one and eight. Um, we were very young. We only graduated three seniors on our team last year, so we're returning. Uh, the majority of our team, um, and they're all going to be seniors and juniors with a lot of playing experience. Uh, a lot of our seniors are three-year varsity or more players. Uh, Donye is a four-year varsity player, so we're expecting big things out of that group of uh, athletes that we have coming back with their experience. Um, uh, we, our depth is uh, actually looking really good right now. We're thinking we're going to be able to um, have limited two-way players, so majority of our players are going to be able to be one side of the ball, which I think is going to help us execute at a higher level. Um, we had a great summer with our passing league and things like that, like everyone else. Just very excited about uh, the opportunity that we're going to have to bounce back and, um, you know, get back to uh, uh, normal things that we're doing at Ferndale. Um, so thanks again for everybody for coming out and good luck this season. Players to watch on Ferndale, obviously they're no Bates a quarterback. Um, curious to see how he's going to do his senior season. Um, Credit McAllister at wide receiver. Um, he's going to be a big time player for them. Um, Jabril McHugh's at running back, that's going to be, and he also going to play some linebacker as well. But when you look at Ferndale's strength, it's up front, led, of course, by Donnie Edwards-Carson, um, then Kern and Levier Croxton, um, and Quentin Sands. I mean, like, I'm very curious to see where Ferndale goes this season, especially with the experience he got coming back. Um, I've been hearing a lot of the word bounce back. So I caught up with Coach Eric Royal at the podium uh, for an interview talking about his team and his schedule. I got Ferndale coach Eric Royal here. Coach, um, last season was very rough for you guys. Um, talk about what why this year could be different. Um, I think we're just going to be older as a team overall. Um, last year, at any given point of the season, you know, in, in a game, we were playing six to seven sophomores or freshmen on the field. Um, we took our lumps last year, but I think it's going to pay off in terms of experience and understanding what it takes to compete at the varsity level. So our depth is going to help. Like I said, I mentioned when we're in front of the podium. We're looking to potentially have, you know, eight one-way players on defense, seven on offense, and then kind of a few guys going both ways. So that's going to be, I think, going to be the biggest difference, just our experience and overall depth. Talk about playing Grand Rapids West Catholic Week too. That's an interesting matchup. How'd yeah. you get that matchup? Uh, it just that was the, that was the left the left of the pick. Um, you know, being week two, most of the school was going to conference play at that time, so it wasn't a lot of opponents that were left that we were able to choose from. Um, and with them being such a strong schedule, it help us get ready for our conference play. You know, um, it's going to it's going to really allow us to face a quality team that's been 
on a championship level for many years that are going to be able to help us prepare for our league play. What are the expectations here, Coach? Um, I just want to compete. Um, I want to be able to get back to our style of football, playing physical up front, you know, playing good, solid defense, um, and just giving ourselves a chance to win every game. I think we have the athletes to do that. Um, we just got to be able to bring everything together, start Monday, and just start coming together as a team. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Program strength is a concern despite the experience in the varsity level coming back. I, that's the only thing I'm very concerned about when you look at Ferndale. Um, we mentioned the schedule. Of course, um, go more in depth with the schedule here. Of course, um, week one they open up at Macomb Lance Cruz. Um, this is an interesting match. It's the first ever meeting between these two teams. Um, but the Macomb Lance Cruz, Lance Cruz has made the postseason three straight times. Um, they are 18 and, 18 and 10 since 2019. This is going to be a really difficult matchup early on for um, Coach Eric Royal's team heading into Macomb County to take on a very good um, Macomb Lance Cruz team. Um, week two, we mentioned Grand Rapids West Catholic. Um, how do I put this? I mean, 17 straight postseason appearances. I mean, this is going to be an absolute difficult, difficult matchup for the Eagles. I mean, Grand Rapids West Catholic is one of those proven teams in the Ottawa Kent. I mean, like, it's going to be, this is going to be really difficult. The good news for Eagles fans is that game's at home. So, it's going to be a really, really difficult matchup, to say the least, in that one. Week three, they take on Royal Oak. Um, Ferndale, of course, is 3-1 um, against Royal Oak the last four years. Of course, last, of course the um, only loss was last year. Of course, I remember that one. That was a huge upset, 35-28. I still remember the um, the Twitter um, bash that I got from that game. Um, but when you look at this matchup here, it's going to be really interesting because Roy Oaks got a lot of experience back, but so does Ferndale. I mean, this could be a nail biter again down at um, Roy Oaks. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, week number four, they go to Troy. Um, last year, Ferndale lost 35-12 to the Colts a year ago. So very curious to see how that matchup is going to be, how they match up against Darius Whiteside. Um, so that's going to be really interesting there. And then September 23rd, they take on Berkeley. I know it's the first meeting since 2019. Um, last year, Ferndale had a COVID outbreak within their program. Um, so that's going to be really interesting. Of course, in the neighborhood rivalry, it's a interesting rivalry. Of course, um, you know they've had they've had some good battles. Um, week number um, six, Avondale. This rivalry has been back and forth between these two teams. Um, when you look at when you look at last season, of course, um, Ferndale fell 21 not at Avondale last season. Um, this matchup at Avondale, so this one's, no, this one's at Ferndale. Um, this is going to be really interesting. Even though in the, in, historically, the road team has won most of the matchups. Um, so this is going to be really, really interesting to say the least there in that one. Um, week seven, it's Farmington. Of course, it's at home. Um, Ferndale's one and three against the Falcons in their last four games. Um, and then week eight, it's Pontiac. Um, it's Pontiac at home. Of course, Ferndale's won eight straight against the Phoenix. So this is going to be a real interesting matchup to say the least in that one. And then they close out the year week nine with St. Clair Shores Lakeshore. It's the first meeting with the Shoreians since 2008. They lost 27-13 in the first round of the postseason. Um, so when you look at Ferndale this season, there is a lot of expectations with the Eagles. Um, very, very curious to see where the Eagles are at um, this season, especially when you look at that schedule. It is absolutely vicious, especially the first two weeks of the season. I mean, they got Macomb Lance Cruz, and then they got Grand Rapids West Catholic. That's going to be a really, really difficult matchup, to say the least, for for um, for Ferndale. So that's going to be the key matchup: is is can Ferndale overcome the first two weeks? Where if they go two and zero, then I think it's going to be a special season. But it's going to be really, really challenging, even with the experience and the overall depth they have coming back. I mean, like that schedule looks really, really vicious to look at Ferndale this season. Um, let's go now from Ferndale. Let's go to Royal Oak. Of course, when you look at the Ravens, 10 and 24, 
you look at the, I mean, like, but when you look at Royal Oak, they got a new staff, new coaching staff, a lot of optimism surrounding the program. So here is new Royal Oak coach Justin Truett at the podium talking about the Ravens. All right, good afternoon. My name is uh, Dustin Truitt. This is my first year as head coach here at Royal Oak High School. Uh, this summer has been an off-season change, uh, primarily with the coaching staff, but also getting Royal Oak football back on track with where we want to be. And so these players here with us today have spent the time in the off-season getting kids within our community out to play football while learning new schemes and new systems. And so it's been a challenging off-season. We have 46 kids in the program. As we stand today, we have 91. So it's a it's because of these five. Everything that they've done in their school, promoting the program and getting them out. So I'm gonna let them introduce themselves. Makai Jenkins, running back, strong safety. Ellie Finch, O line linebacker. Uh Carson Travel, O line D line. Uh Hudson Seidel quarterback. Evan Tower, D line, O line. Uh, we're excited to compete in the OAA Gold this year and uh, the Ravens. When you look at Royal Oak this year, they got a lot of experience coming back, and it starts with quarterback Hudson Seidel. Of course, um, Seidel last season was very – was on and off last year. I mean, like, when you look at um, his performance. But also, but the main guy is Makai Jenkins. Of course, when you look at Jenkins, he's a CMU commit, very good running back. He, he has played some defense. Um, but Jenkins, of course, um, we all know he, he's a very good runner, very efficient runner. Um, but you got to have a very good offensive line, too. And, and Roy Oak has that, of course. Um, you look at, um, led, of course, by Ellie Finch up front. Um, but when you look at the Ravens, I mean, like, and I talked to Coach Truitt on the podcast, um, you know, there is a lot of change going on with the program. I mean, like, they're going to have a new defensive scheme. They're going to have some changes in the offense. So... When I talked to Coach Truett in the interview, you know, I looked at, I talked to him about some, I talked about some of the changes and also some of the players to watch for. I got Royal Coach Justin Truett here, of course, last week on the podcast. We talked a lot about, um, about your team. Um, any changes from the, any changes? You know, how's everything been going for you? Everything's going good. We're just excited about the numbers, excited to get some pads on here uh, soon and excited about the season starting. Talk about the um, talk about of course you're um, having Ellie up on on the line. Obviously, when you look at the returners, I mean, like, um, what is the expectation issue for Royal Oak, especially for Ellie, for um, doing what she's been doing? Yeah, you know, uh, this season we should have four return starters on the O line. Ellie being one of them. Uh, Carson Traub and Evan, both seniors, and then Aiden Tasha Jr. Um, so we're really excited about the four of them, and there's some sophomores that we're really excited about um, that will give them good competition. So we're excited to see how Ellie responds to um, returning to that role, but also the, the young guys coming up that you know have good size and are pushing for uh, starting time as well. What are the expectations here, Coach? Uh, you know, our expectation is just to go out and compete each week and be competitive, and we want these games to... Um, to hopefully go in our favor, but that's uh, just going to be determined on the hard work we put in and the amount of time that we prepare for it. Thank you real much, Coach. Thank you. When you look at Royal Oak, the schedule, I mean, like, when you look at the Ravens, the schedule is interesting. I mean, like, obviously you open up the year with Holly on the road. Um, interesting coaching matchup between um, Coach Keat, Coach um, Truett, and Billy Keenis, of course. Um, we mentioned, of course, Holly does play Avondale as well on the schedule. Um, it's an, this is an interesting matchup. I mean, like, curious to see how Royal Oak responds going north up, up on I-75, um, going all the way to Holly. I mean, like, it is not an easy place to play, I'll tell you that much right now. Um, when you go into Holly, of course, it is, I mean, like, it will not be an easy game for Royal Oak at all, taking on the Bronchos, of course. Um, the Bronchos, they're not a deep team, but they have a very good team, of course. They have a very good quarterback in Ashton DeHart. Um, so that's going to be a really difficult match for the Ravens, especially defensively. Um, really concerned about that defense um, heading into the year. Um, week two, they take on Farmington. Of course, last season it was a um, complete disaster. Of course, it was a 33-6 game last season. Um, Farmington won that game. Um, week three, they take on Ferndale. Now, this was the game that a lot of people, I mean, this was a surprise upset in my opinion. Of course, when Royal Oak went into Ferndale, 
and beat them 35-28. Um, I ended up getting um, blasted on Twitter because of it, because um, I did say last year I projected Royal to go on nine, um, but I did not expect them to beat Fern the other way they did last year. Um, week four, they take on Pontiac. Um, Royals won eight straight against the Phoenix. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they do. It's a home game for Royals, so I'm very curious to see how that matchup goes. Week five, Troy Athens. I did watch that game on CMN TV um, where it was a really high scoring game where um, Royal Oak fell to Troy Athens 43-35 a year ago, but it was a really good game um, in that one. Um, week six, I did watch this game also on CMN as well, um, where Royal Oak was lost to Berkeley on their home field, 49-9. I remember side up throwing two picks for touchdowns. I remember it was a big game for, for um, Dick Dombowski um, last season. Now Dombowski's graduated, um, no longer um, at Berkeley. Um, uh, so that's gonna be a really interesting matchup to see between these two teams. I did mention, um, it, I, mean, I know how um, the student section is gonna be. It's gonna be really interesting there um, with um, Royal Oak making the travel to Hurley uh, for Berkeley's homecoming. Of course, um, you know, they're not too far away from each other, only separated by Woodward Avenue um, from west to east. So that's gonna be really interesting there in that matchup there. Week seven, they take on Troy um, at home. Of course, um, Royal Oaks lost eight of the last nine meetings. They lost 22 nothing last season in the Colts. Um, these two um, are only separated by a couple miles off Crooks and Long Lake. Um, so that's going to be a really interesting matchup between these those two teams and Royal and Troy. Um, no strangers to one another. I'm very curious to see how Royal Oaks is going to cover Darius Whiteside though in that matchup. Um, so that's going to be a matchup to watch very carefully. Um, week number eight, they take on Avondale. Of course, um, Av of course, last season it was 35-21. Um, Avondale over Royal Oak a year ago. So that's going to be a really, really interesting matchup to see what happens there in that one. And then they close out the year with week nine, going to Matt, taking on Madison Knights Lampier. It's the first meeting between the um, Ravens and the Rams. Um, I mean, Coach, Ryan, Coach, Coach Otoski has done a really nice job at Madison Heights Lampier. Um, it's going to be a really difficult matchup for um, Royal Oak this season. Of course, when you look at Royal Oak, there's a lot of optimism surrounding the Ravens, but there's also a lot of questions. And for Royal Oak football, I mean, like this year, I know they're going through a coaching transition, coaching change, but when you look at the Ravens this year, um, you know, if they can, if they can find a way you know what I mean? Find a way. They could surprise some people this year. I mean, like, don't be surprised if they do. Um, they could over exceed expectations. I think Roy Oak is a sleeper to watch this year, especially because this team is really playing with nothing to lose and everything gained. So that's my take on Roy Oak. And let's look at our final team in the gold division. This is the Pontiac Phoenix. Um, for Pontiac, you know, longest losing streak in state history in the state right now. They're 5 and 82 since 2012. But there are some positives with Pontiac. Of course, um, they just opened up a new stadium this year. They got new uniforms. So, and they got, and there's a lot of positive momentum riding in the Pontiac right now. So here is Pontiac coach um, Ken Wade at the podium. Uh, like everybody else, first I want to thank Coach Vernon and uh, Rochester for hosting this event. Uh, thanks to the media for coming out to cover Coach High School Sports in our community. I'm going to do things a little bit different than some of the other guys did. I'm going to introduce my guys here. Um, here we have wide receiver, defensive back, Charles Blake. I have uh, next to me here, quarterback, defensive back, Kanye Donaldson. Uh, offensive, defensive lineman, Jalen Fair. Running back, defensive back, Carter Gladwell. Um, it's been a struggle at Pontiac because it's my second season here. Um, this is our first full season of having an actual weightlifting program, a uh, strength conditioning program that was much better than the ones that have been done in the past. Um, we had a very full off-season schedule, took advantage of everything we could, got to challenge ourselves in passing leagues, uh, learn to improve, got a better feel for our offense, improved our coaching staff. Um, obviously, we did beat our new stadium last year. We're really looking forward to having six home games this year um, at our new stadium, and we're looking forward to continue to try and 
build our young men into better football players, but also better students, better uh, better human beings, and that's what our focus is. I'm learning on how to be great at everything we do, not just on the football field. So I look forward to keep trying to push these young men to be better students, athletes, and everything else. So um, with that being said, we, we hold the longest losing streak in the state of Michigan, and I promise you this, it will end this season. Everyone else have to stay healthy, have a good season. Thank you very much. He, players to watch for this year on Pontiac, obviously it starts with Dave Van Hall. I do remember what he did against Stockbridge. He had five touchdowns against them. Um, Pontiac scored 40 points in that game, which was the most since 2011 um, when they scored, I mean, prior to that, they scored 66 against West Bluefield back in 2011. Um, other players to watch for Kanye Donaldson, a quarterback. Um, he was a freshman last year. He's a sophomore now. Um, of course, Charles White at wide receiver. Um, there are some pieces with Pontiac. There is some pieces. I am a little concerned about the depth, program strength, and experience. Um, you know, especially what they've had to go through the last few years. Um, so here is Pontiac coach Ken Wade. I had an interview with Mr. with Coach Wade. Um, you know, um, so so here's the interview with him. I got the coach of the act, Coach Ken Wade. Of course, um. How has everything been going over there at Pontiac? I know you made some changes this off season. Um, how has everything been? Uh, everything's moving in a positive direction. We're definitely excited about uh, our facilities. A lot of things, changes we made. We've had our numbers up. We've had the buy-in from our players. Uh, it's a lot better this season. We got to have a full off-season program, so we're really excited about it and adding some coaches to the staff who are younger, fresher out of the college game, uh, guys that actually played for me back when I was doing youth ball a long time ago, so there's relationships there as well, and they have some of them have connections to the school, so we're really uh, excited about the direction we're moving in. We're having a lot crisper off-season programs, um, so with, with all the things, with new uniforms, a lot of things that the kids are excited about, so um, now the thing is just taking those steps on the field, turning all the hard work in the off-season into success on the field so we can continue to grow as a program. Talk about your schedule. You got Madison Heights, Bishop Foley week one, and then I'm looking at that schedule to cool out with Garden City. Um, talk about your schedule. Um, we are excited to be now that the realignment with the OAA gold, with the, the opportunity to go out and schedule three games. Uh, we obviously, and like you said, have Bishop Foley week one. We know we're going to be tested. They were in a prep bowl, the, you know, a Catholic school that's very discipline organized. Um, we were able to add Mount Clements at Garden City to the schedule as well. Um, we think some of those games are winnable. We, we really believe that we should be in every game in the OAA gold. We really believe that the steps we made to put us in position to be uh, a lot more competitive than we've been in the past. And, and we will break through this year. I, I truly believe that. I know I said that when I was on the podium earlier, but I just believe in the work that we're putting in. Um, the, the gentlemen that we have, the, the leadership that we've had this year, comparative to how we were last season, comparative to how it was when I came in, it's grown exponentially. So we're we're just excited for what's going on and just hoping to start to make those steps and turn our program around. What are the expectations this year, Coach? Uh, my expectation is first off, our first number one goal is we're gonna we're gonna end this losing streak. Second expectation is we expect to be competing for the OAA gold title. I, I truly believe that. I don't think that uh, there's no reason that we shouldn't be just as competitive as anybody in this division. I also believe that we are non-league games, like I said, or should be winnable. So uh, we have a goal of trying to make the playoffs this year. I know that sounds kind of crazy for a team that holds the longest losing streak in the state, but that's just what we believe in. We're really putting in the work and trying to get us to that point where, where we're going to be a, a consistent team battling for a playoff position. So that is our goal, to try and win our division and to try and make the playoffs. I know that's probably a cliche or a lot of coaches are going to say those type of things, but that, that's, that's what we really believe can happen, and that's what we're striving to do. Thank you very much, Coach. All right, thank you very much. There's a lot of hope and a lot of optimism with Pontiac. And when you look at the Phoenix, you know, when you look at Coach Wade, you know, I've read, I read in the um, other media as well, you know, he's saying the same message, you know what I mean? They're looking to snap the longest losing streak in the state. They're looking to snap, you know, they're looking for to win the gold. I mean, like, when you look at the division, you know, it looks very in reach for Pontiac. I mean, like, when you look at the schedule this year, it looks daunting. I mean, like, Obviously, opening up week one against Match Knights, Bishop Foley. Of course, they made the prep bowl last year. Um, they have made four straight postseason appearances. They're 29 and 10 since 2018. It is a very, very difficult matchup for Pontiac, um, taking on a good, a very good, proven Bishop Foley program. Um, but it'll be interesting to see. I'm very curious to see how Bishop Foley matches up with Davian Hall. I'm very curious to see how. He does in that matchup um, against a very good Bishop Foley team, very good Bishop Foley program. Um, this, they're a well-coached team, so it's going to be a really, really tough match, to say the least, there in that one. Week two, this is where I think they have a chance to break the streak. They take on Mount Clements. It's the first meeting, even though they made the postseason in the last two years, but Mount Clements has not been necessarily the greatest. 
Um, I think if there's a, a team that I really believe that can break the that Pontiac can break the streak, this is the game right here. I think they can really do it. Um, week three, they take on Berkeley. Of course, last season it was 42 to eight. Um, Pontiac fell last season to um to the Bears. Um, it was at the new stadium. Um, so it's going to be an interesting matchup. Um, Berkeley, of course, I'm very curious to see where the quarterback and receiving situation and secondary situations are with the Bears. Um, so that's going to be a really interesting matchup there. Um, week number four, they go to Royal Oak where they've lost eight straight games to the Ravens. Um, it's a very difficult matchup to say the least. Um, very curious to see what happens there in that matchup. Um, week five, they take on Avondale. This is a rivalry game. Um, they fell 52-20 last season. Um, there were some, some strides with Pontiac scoring 20 points last season. Of course, last season, I know they scored 40 against Stockbridge. Um, and then Farmington, um, they take on week six. It's on the road. They lost 50-8 last season. Um, week seven is Troy Athens. It's at home. Um, that was a 58-0 loss for them last year. Um, week eight, they take on Ferndale. This was a very competitive game last season. Um, the score does say 14-6, but it could have went either way. Um, I think that will be a real interesting matchup between Ferndale and Pontiac, um, how that matchup goes. I mean, like, you know, if Pontiac keeps improving like, they, like, um, like they've been doing, I think this is going to be a really tight game between the Eagles and the Phoenix, um, considering where last year was last season. And I think it's going to be a really good game over at Pontiac. And then week nine, this is where I think another game I think Pontiac can win. That's Garden City. Um, this is the first meeting, but Garden City's really been struggling. I mean, six and 10 the last two years. Um, Garden City really not known as a football power. Um, so I think when you look at this matchup here, I think Pontiac's got a great chance to win this game. And I think, you know, when you look at Pontiac's schedule, you know, there are some games where I think they can snap the longest um, losing streak in the state, and I think I think, and I agree with Coach Wade this year. I, I I think I guarantee you this this year, you can put us on air. Pontiac will snap the lo the longest losing streak in the state this year. I put that on air. You know they will snap the longest losing streak in the state this year. Um, when you look at, of course, these are the projections coming into the year. My projections. These are the um. First projections that I've, I've done here, of course, that there will have to be some changes a little bit, um, considering um, Pontiac's schedule. I have Pontiac at two and seven um, because that match with Bishop Foley. Um, but when I look at the division, um, Avondale, you know, when I look at, I think Avondale's favored because of the experience they got back, um, the passing game they got back. I'm just very concerned about Berkeley secondary and receiving core. Um, that's where I. That's where it really came down to for me with with Avondale and Berkeley. Um, I just think that, but I think Berkeley. You know, when you look at, I think Berkeley's gonna have a better overall record than an league record. Um, and then that game at Avondale, that's gonna be really interesting um, between those two teams. Roy Oak is a sleeper. Um, yes, I had them at two wins, but I think they can win more than two games. I mean, like, I think that. Um, you know, I think, you know, there's some tough games on that schedule there for Royal Oak. And I, I just, I think they could surprise some people. I mean, but we'll see. But right now, when I look at it overall, I have them winning two games right now. Um, Ferndale, you know, yes, they got experience. They got a lot of proven experience. But that schedule looks vicious. Um, that's why I have them winning three games. I mean, like. And then you look at that league schedule. It's going to be tough, I think, for the Eagles um, going forward there. So when I look at Ferndale, you know, they could be another team that surprises people. And then there's Pontiac. Obviously, I have them at 2-7. and seven. Um, So when I look at the Phoenix this year, um, I think they're going, to, they're going to surprise some people. But when I look at the gold right now, I just think that right now between Avondale and Berkeley, Right now, I could trust Avondale a little bit more because of the balance. Um, Berkeley, you know, when you look at the Bears this year, they're going to be good. I think both Avondale and Berkeley are playoff teams this year. Um, Avondale, I think, will be in Division Three. Pontiac, I mean, Berkeley will be in Division Two. Um, so it's going to be something to really watch for going forward here in the Gold Division this year. 
All right, everybody, I'm going to sign it off here. I wish everybody the best of luck in the gold this season. Next week, we have the blue, followed by the white in, um, two, in um, a couple weeks, and then we have the red. So, okay, now everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Take care. God bless. Wish everybody the best of luck this season in the gold division this season. Take care, and I will see you next week, everybody.